so in the last video, uh, we went through and set up a connection between an S120 system that we had set up previously and a, a 1511 technology CPU. And we configured the telegrams that we talked about, and we are now ready to set up a couple of basic technology objects. Now, if you miss that video and you're not familiar with how to either set up the S120 or the telegram, I will link those videos down in the description below, but you should probably check those out if you're not familiar with how to set those up. Without further ado, let's jump in to setting up this system for technology objects. So with this, we already have this drive unit set up and there's PLC there already configured. It's communicating. We're good to go. Now, if you're not familiar with what a technology object is, a technology object is a way that you can separate out your PLC program from controlling a specific type of drive. What, what do I mean by that? That, that, sounds, that sounded stupid. There's lots of drive manufacturers out there. There's a lot of even drive types in Siemens library. You have G120s, S120s, all sorts of other objects. But if you use technology objects, a technology object offers a way to interface to the drive and then your PLC program does not change the way you control based on whatever drive. And I'll show you how easy these things are. I have another longer video that goes into it really in depth, which was actually the motivation for this because I wanted to kind of break everything up into different steps and show you just the very basics of how to set up technology objects. If you want a deeper explanation, find that technology objects. It's a, it's a live stream that I did almost, I guess, over a year ago now. It goes into a real in-depth of technology objects. But technology objects here, we're going to set up two different types. We're going to set up a, a speed axis and a position axis because we have two drives on this S120 system. First thing we want to do is underneath the PLC, because remember, a technology object is a piece of code that is running on the PLC. So we open up the PLC in our project. Again, if you're not familiar with TIA portal, everything's in the same project. So it's all here. I don't have any HMIs in this project, but I've got some very big systems that have a lot of different technology all in the same thing. The technology object runs on the PLC because it is a piece of code. We're going to select add new object. There's a couple of different options for different things, counting, measuring, PIDs, but we want the motion controls because we are drive people. We like actually moving things and making things happen. So the first thing we're going to set up is just a simple speed axis. So motion control, we want to double click speed axis. It sets up the data block. We could kind of talk about those in more in depth later because there's a ton of information on that. The first thing you're gonna do and you're gonna be presented with is this screen. I want to name this as a trolley axis TO. And that's what we're gonna call it. Now, if you notice over here, there's a bunch of red, nasty looking red X's. That means those parameters have not been set up yet. The first one I'm going to go to is set up a drive. All of my drives are communicating via Profinet to the PLC, and we set that up in the last couple of videos. Where this red box is, I'm going to click on the dots. I'm going to click on Profinet IO system, drop down, and we have our drive unit one. Remember that drive unit one. That drive unit is the overall system that contains control units, line modules, signal modules, motor modules, all of that. For this one, I'm gonna select this simple speed axis as the trolley axis. Because if you remember, that trolley axis was just a vector control. So it was just an induction motor. So it's gonna be less performance than the motor that's on drive one. So we're gonna select that trolley axis and click on the check mark. And if you notice something over in this, we got all green checks. Well, not all green. We got green and blue checks. And technically, we're good to go. That's all you need to start programming this drive. Remember in the last episode, we set up the telegrams? Well, because we did that first, this was already ready to go. Everything was already set up. 
we already knew ahead of time, hey, we want to do this type of technology object. So probably want to use this type of telegram. We don't want to use a telegram one or a telegram two, because there are a couple that are the only options for these technology objects. That's why I picked the telegram 105 is because I had a little bit of insider information talking about a couple of decades of working with these drives. If you didn't, however, and you didn't know which drive telegram you wanted to use, here are your options. I'm still gonna go with the Telegram 105. If you came here first, we also can click this device configuration and it goes to the device view for the drive that was set up. And if we didn't have everything set up properly, we would be able to set it up here. And so that's how we would set this up. So let's go back. If you notice, again, Tia's got all of these different screens going back and forth. Uh, we're gonna go back to the technology object and that's it, that's really it. Save our project, we're done, we're good to go. We can start programming with that technology object. That's gonna be in the next video, but I wanna set up the next technology object with that uh, permanent magnet servo motor that we set up. Same thing. Add new object. We're going to do a positioning axis on this because it's got that, that higher accuracy. And so we're just going to, we can go ahead and actually name it. We'll call it a servo motor TO, technology object. We can set this to automatic and click OK. And it brings up kind of a similar screen than what we did before, but it's going to have a little bit more information. If you notice, as we step on top of these, it kind of gets more and more and more. So the thing about technology objects is they build upon each other. The positioning axis contains everything that a speed axis has, but not everything that's in the positioning axis is in the speed axis, obviously, because then they would both be speed axes. So that's why there's more information here. And I'm gonna step through just kind of the basics on this. One of the things about a positioning system is you need to know what type of, of motion you have. Are you going to be doing something in linear motion? Are you measuring something in millimeters, inches, feet, meters, whatever? Or are you gonna be measuring it in degrees? Because that's the difference between this linear and rotary. So for this one, we're just gonna leave it as linear because we want everything in millimeters and we're gonna use metric because we're using Siemens and so metric is the way to go, right? Um, same thing here, we got these red X's over here. We go over to the drive and we're gonna select, again, just the Profinet system, go to that drive unit, which is the big collection of everything and we're gonna select drive one and we're gonna click check. Now, once again, magically, all of the checkboxes go green because, well, frankly, I wanted it to happen that way. And so that's why we set everything up. Let's go through and look at them. If they weren't green, you might have to set up an encoder because remember, Siemens gives you the flexibility to do absolutely anything you want to do. And you can get yourself into trouble, but if you kind of do things in the right order and then just kind of the standard way, you tend to not run into that trouble. This had that encoder, the drive click encoder, that's gonna, once we power it up, it's gonna go out there and see it. And it's gonna be like, oh, hey, here's what's here. I'm bringing that into the project. That's gonna do that the first time we power it up. It doesn't actually know right now what's here, but it knows it has encoder one because that was set up before. So the data exchange with the drive, just like on the other axis, we set it up as 105 before because we wanted it to work and we knew ahead of time that we wanted to use 105. And then what is up with this? Data exchange with encoder, what? The thing about it is this data exchange or this encoder might not actually be on the motor. You can have an external encoder and use these technology objects. And that's what this is here. Uh, so the encoder can doesn't necessarily have to be on the axis itself in this. Just remember that. On a positioning axis, there are a bunch of things that you might wanna go through. The mechanics 
is specifically one that you really, before you commission a system with technology objects, I cannot stress enough, make sure your mechanics are right. Because I promise you, if you set them up wrong, you might break something. Either that or things are going to go so slow that you don't even understand what's going on. Because the mechanics are every all of your gear ratios that's between your motor and your encoder or your motor and your actual um, your actual movement of your system. So remember, in technology objects, we're using millimeters. So we're not using RPMs. We're not using rotation of that motor. We only care about the position when we're using a position technology object. So here, that's why we only look at um, why this is one of the most important things. Also, these dyna dynamic default values, very important that you go through and set them to something reasonable. What's reasonable? You're going to have to think about it. What's reasonable on your system? If, if that system is a rocket, then a few, a few millimeters a second might be as fast as you ever want to go. If this is some sort of uh, delta picker, then you're probably going to need hundreds, if not thousands of millimeters a second uh, of, of motion. These default values will get plugged in to your technology object functions that we're going to plug into our system later. Be sure to go through and, and make sure that these dynamic default values are set to something reasonable because that will save your butt when you're going through and commissioning these systems. Because frankly, I've done it myself, gone through and set something and just left it at zero. And if you leave one of those inputs as zero, then it's going to set it to this default value. And sometimes these just don't make sense. Sometimes these accelerations are way too fast. And there is a potential for at best damaging the system, if not injuring someone on site. So be very careful with these. The last thing that you probably want to look at is your control loop. And it's interesting here that there's two different types of control here. If you notice this is green, there's two position controllers. There's a position controller that is down in the drive itself. And there is a position controller that is controlled here at the technology object. Now, if you notice right here where it says dynamic servo control is only possible with drive telegram 5, 6, 105, or 106. It's almost like someone here wanted to be able to show you this feature. The dynamic servo control means that you bring the position controller down onto the drive itself and you don't have to suffer that millisecond or so delay of communication that goes between the drive and the PLC. That means that you can take this fairly low performance in the grand in the scheme of Siemens PLCs and have very high performance position control because that control unit that you selected is closing that servo position control loop every 125 microseconds by default. Not milliseconds, microseconds. So you're on the order of magnitude difference between what you can do. And that's only available with those telegrams 5, 6, 105, and 106. Most of the time, it doesn't really matter that much in that high performance. You're going to want that high performance on things like printing presses or delta pickers, like I mentioned before. Otherwise, you can select this position control in the PLC, and you notice that little bar moved, and all of that position control, and so moved into the PLC, and so now it's in the technology object. And so now it's going to be a little bit slower, but you're not going to have to worry about what's being programmed on the drive. The way you make that decision is between, are you a drives person? Are you very familiar with drives? And is this a really performance-based application? Then maybe you might consider turning on dynamic servo control. 
if it's a fairly standard positioner and you have a generally a decent amount of time to do stuff with, it's probably just easier to just leave it in the PLC because that gives you a lot more information readily available to PLC. You don't have to worry about those free telegrams and sending information back and forth. You can just directly access like you may be used to on some other manufacturers drive systems when they play together well. I will say I have a pretty high performance roofing winder that we design and we we build at Alpha Industrial Technologies that is running off of a 1515 technology CPU and it uses all of the control for it. The position control is in the PLC itself we actually don't have to use dynamic servo control on those. And we have set a lot of records with that winder because it's a little bit easier to work with. It's a little bit easier to just get set up. These PLCs have really high performance. And when you're using isochronous communication with Profinet, that little delay doesn't quite matter quite as much. So, if you have a question about maybe your application, whether or not you need that, drop a comment below and I'll try to get with you and maybe talk to you about kind of what the, what the difference is between those two. The next series that we're going to be doing is kind of talking about the, how you control these actual technology objects. So a little bit of a sneak peek is once you have these uh, axes set up, you're going to be programming these using what you might be familiar with, control functions such as MC power, MC reset, MC speed, MC position, these standardized motion control blocks that have these ISO standard blocks that are available to across manufacturers. A little sneak peek, we'll just throw real quick in here. We're gonna throw up some instructions and we're gonna go to technology objects here and go to motion control. And if I can extend these up a little bit <laughs> to where we can actually see. And here's, here's the blocks. Here's the, the where we're talking about. Our basics, MC power. I'm not going to name these right now because I'm going to be deleting these. We'll be talking about these. Uh, MC power, MC reset. And it's asking for an axis here. You just drag that servo motor control over, drag that servo control motor on. We put in a tag. Um, and you're good to go. That's the basics of those technology objects. Now I'm going to delete these real quick, but we're going to go into more depth into how to actually set up a good program with these technology objects now that we have these. But that'll be in the next video. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment in comment below and I'll try to get back to you. Until then, be looking for the next one. Hit subscribe, ring that bell, for, and you'll get notified for the next, <laughs> when I actually finish up these programs. Until then, I'll see you later.